Hey, I'm Jacob. And I'm Dan. And I'm super excited about today's big idea. But first, Jacob, share with us an experience that totally blew your mind. Well, I remember when I was younger, my stepdad took me to see Monster Truck Show for the first time. And when I was a kid watching these giant machines with wheels the size of my family car take off of jumps and, and clear cars, 10 cars long, it totally blew my mind. Man, that sounds awesome. Today's big idea is that God blows our minds. So let's watch this God story and see what that's all about. So a horse walks into a bar. The bartender says, hey. The horse says, sure. Hi everybody, I'm Jared. Hey, do you ever go out on a nice hot sunny day and just enjoy sitting in the warmth of the sun baking down on you? Well, did you know that that sun is 93 million miles away from the Earth? I know, mind blowing. Today, we're gonna talk about someone that blows my mind. It's actually today's big idea. God blows our minds. God constantly blows my mind with creation, with his wisdom, his love, and the way he cares for us. So to remind you, we're in a series from the Old Testament about a guy named Daniel. Daniel and his friends served in King Nebuchadnezzar's court in Babylon. They were faithful to God in all the ways that he asked them to be. And so God gave them great abilities in wisdom and understanding. He gave Daniel special gifts to interpret visions and dreams. And dreams are where our story begins today in Daniel chapter two. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that really disturbed him. He sent for all the wisest people that served him in his court. He wanted all of them to not only interpret the dream, but first of all, explain to him what the dream was. All of the people who were trained and studied in the evil magical arts told the king that there's no way they could do that. But the king insisted, and he said, if you can't even tell me the dream before you interpret it, then you're going to be put to death. Well, Daniel and his friends found out about this even though they weren't there. Daniel went to one of the guards and said, I would like to see the king because I think I can help him. So Daniel went to his friends, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Let's read what happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret, so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. So God gave Daniel a vision of the dream and then gave him the interpretation of that dream. That is mind blowing. Let's read Daniel's prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. That morning, Daniel went to see the king. The king asked him to explain the dream. Daniel said to him, there's no one on earth that can explain the dream, let alone interpret for you. You've asked the wise men to interpret it based on magical arts. But I can tell you that there is a God in heaven who can give you what you're looking for. So Daniel went on to describe the dream that the king had had. It was a dream about something that hadn't happened yet. The king dreamt about a large statue made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay. There was a large boulder that came from a mountain up high that crushed the statue into all sorts of pieces. The dream, as Daniel explained, was really about the breaking down of kingdoms and the establishing of God's kingdom, an everlasting kingdom that was coming. The king's mind was blown. He bowed down in front of Daniel and said, truly, your God holds the keys to all mysteries and all explanations. He was so impressed with Daniel that he put Daniel in charge of almost all of the kingdom. Mind blown. We don't always see it coming, 
but God can really blow our minds. He must have shocked Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar. You know, one of the amazing things about being a follower of Jesus is that we get to see our minds blowing over and over again as we read stories from the Bible and hear about stories from other people and the way God has helped them and loved them in ways they could never have even expected. Our God loves us and he continues to blow our minds. Well, I'm Jared. We'll see you next time. Can you believe King Nebuchadnezzar? He wanted them to know what he had dreamt. It's like if you're telling your friend you have an idea for a movie or a game, but then you expect them to tell you what your idea is. It sounds crazy, but it shows how amazing God is that he revealed the real answer to Daniel. And if you think God only did amazing things thousands of years ago, think again. We have this story about our friend Noah that will blow your mind. Watch this. I just love that in photography, it's so creative. I like to go to a lot of different places and experiment with different colors and lighting. My way of thinking of how to share a story for a photograph is by just the mood of it. I prefer to have dark, moody light. I like to put people in different places and see how they look like and then experiment a lot with colors and lighting. So when Noah was four or five years old, he would watch television in a really bizarre way. He would kind of tilt his head back like this. And my father one day said, you know, maybe you should get his eyes checked. And it turns out he had to see a kid specialist uh, because his eyesight was very poor. In fact, uh, they told us it was like a point or two away from legally blind. And so there I was on my knees, um, you know, sort of pouring my heart out before God. and. In all this pain, I sort of cried out to God and said, "God, do you do you understand what I'm going through? Do you know how do you know how terrible it is to see your son suffer and not be able to do anything about it?" I actually said those words, <laughs> and then, like, of course, moments later, I realized that, of course, if anyone understood what I was going through, it was God, the Father, who sent His Son, uh, and endured watching Him suffer on the cross. God touched his eyes not in a way that I was expecting him to, because around 11 or 12 years old, uh, when he would steal my phone, he would take pictures. And I noticed that almost every picture he took was so incredibly artful. They were all so beautiful. If I took my glasses off, I wouldn't be able to do anything really, because I wouldn't be able to see patterns or lights. So glasses really helped me with my photography. The way he looks fits his passion. I find my inspiration from other people, such as Sam Calder or Matthew Blum. They're really amazing at portraits and sharing a story. My process is usually just coming home and putting the SD card into my computer and editing for maybe 30 minutes, experimenting with artificial colors and different techniques. So a year or two ago, I went outside in Florida and realized that it was very misty and sort of dark. So I rushed outside to the beach and snapped a photo. And so I submitted it to a website called National Geographic Kids. Every year, five to 10 photos were picked out of 45,000 and I got picked. As a father, I was just so incredibly proud and, and pleased uh, to see the attention he was getting. The more I think about it, the more I realize that God is actually in photography a lot more than I realize, especially when I'm just walking outside in the woods uh, day or night and I see stars or trees and colors. It just, it really is peaceful and reminds me of God's creation. What I'm seeing 
not just in Noah, but in my other sons, I have four of them. God is also apparently taking their weaknesses, these issues that they're dealing with, and each one of them are different. And what's amazing is that we are also recognizing these incredible strengths in those areas. And so I'm just continually amazed at how God is repeating this kind of thing in all of us. God was able to turn my biggest weakness, which was my eyes, I was almost legally blind, and turn them into my greatest strength, which is just picking up a camera and being able to see the world through that, and not through my eyes. I love photography, and let me tell you, Noah is super talented. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that he can use his talents to show that God is awesome? This is truly a case where the world says something can't be done, but then God says, trust me. Nothing is impossible with God. And just like Noah's dad prayed for him, we can ask God to change our circumstances, no matter what. Well, it's time to break into small groups. So let's see what this looks like in our lives. Thank you.